the train reached the next section, the signalman there sent back the signal for train out of section. Once he'd got this signal, a signalman, and this is the important thing, would then, as a routine, set his signals back to clear, even if nothing was coming. And that was the cause of a disaster on a snowy night in January 1876 at Abbots Ripton in Huntingdonshire. The Flying Scotsman had crashed into a coal train and a second express had ploughed into the wreckage. The machinery of the signal itself had failed. At danger, the signal arm stuck out quite normally at horizontal, but this wasn't their usual position, for most of the time they were at clear. And when they were at clear, the arm dropped down into a slot. Captain Tyler's inquiry showed that the signal arms had frozen inside the signal posts and that they weren't showing danger when they should have done. With the arms normally at down, the poor signalman suddenly found all his signals immovably frozen at clear. One of the fundamental principles, if not the fundamental principle, of all railway working is that all safety devices must fail safe. This fail-safe idea was clearly spelt out in Captain Tyler's report, but it was far from being the accepted gospel that it is today. That didn't come until after an accident in 1889 at Armagh in Ireland. A train had stopped on an embankment and had to be divided. Because at this time brakes were pulled on by a vacuum, as soon as the pipes were disconnected, the back half of the train was left with no workable brakes and ran back down the hill to hit an oncoming train. By simply reversing the system, holding the brakes off by vacuum, they became fail-safe. Damage to the pipes then caused the vacuum to disappear and so put on the brakes. The Armagh accident gave rise at once, within a year, to legislation by which the inspecting officers got the three things that they had been fighting for for so long. That is, a proper system of space interval and not time interval, interlocking between signals and points, and continuous automatic brakes. The new legislation of the 1889 Act was the first major piece of railway law. But it came too late to prevent an accident on the Great Western at Norton Fitzwarren in 1890. A coal train had finished shunting and the signalman put it to wait on the wrong side of the road, the near side, while on the far side a fast goods went through. When the goods train had passed, the signalman from a neighbouring box offered the Norton Fitzwarren signalman a broad gauge express from the other direction and he cheerfully accepted it, forgetting about the coal train. passengers were killed and nine injured. The signalman admitted that he'd simply forgotten the coal train. He'd not been feeling well since being knocked down by a light engine, and on this particular day he'd been bad in the head, worse than usual. Apart from the danger of a sick man being in charge of a signal box, the central point about the organization of a safe railway comes out yet again from this accident. Simple forgetfulness is inevitable and produces tragedies. The inspecting officer made some useful suggestions about how a signalman's memory could be jogged. The first was a simple mechanical reminder. A metal collar which would physically stop a lever being pulled to clear. This was the origin of the collar that was to be forgotten 25 years later at Quintins Hill. Another rule which came in soon afterwards and was also forgotten at Quintins Hill was the blocking back rule. 
that if your stretch of line was obstructed, you must notify the signal box in the rear so that they couldn't even offer you another train. I'll slap to keep you there a few minutes, driver. All right, Frank, I'll come over. Then what was called Rule 55, which said that if a train was stopped by a signal, the driver must whistle, and if the signal was not lowered in three minutes in clear weather, or immediately in snow or fog, then somebody had to go to the signal box to make sure that the proper precautions had been taken. Again, this was to be the third rule broken a quarter of a century later at Quintins Hill. This one hours, is it? Yes. Yeah. Number 17, Leo, you touch for it. Despite its obvious good sense, the rule about collars was not accepted by all the companies. Busy these days? For example, the Midland Railway didn't use them, even in a complicated box, like Hawes Junction. Hawes Junction is a very bleak spot up in the Pennines. It was also a very busy spot, since the trains needed extra engines to help them up the hills. At Hawes, all these extra engines were turned and sent down again. Late on Christmas Eve, 1910, the signalman was handling no fewer than five extra engines, as well as a busy program of express trains. After turning one pair of engines, he parked them on the main line while he turned a second pair. Then, without collars to remind him, he forgot the first two waiting on the main line and set his signals to clear for an express to Scotland. It was the two forgotten engines that had been waiting behind the signal which set off, quite naturally assuming that it had been cleared for them. Their departure went unnoticed by the signalman. Without realising what had happened, the signalman went quietly about his business, leaving the signals set for the speeding express coming up behind. It was travelling much faster, in the same direction, and on the same tracks as the two light engines. Signalman Sutton was still completely oblivious to the danger, even when a driver who had seen what had happened from one of the other engines on the turntable came to the signal box to warn him. Well, what have you done with these two engines for Carlisle? They've gone to Carlisle. Not like you think they haven't. When you pulled off the express, them two engines were standing behind the starter, waiting for it to come off. And when it came off, they went. The first thing Sutton could do to check was to ring Benjamin Bellis in the next signal box. Ben, where's them two light engines I sent on? You haven't given me out. Has the down express arrived yet? There's been no come. Bye. The express will be into them. The down express is railwoman's language for an express going away from London. In this case, the one following the two light engines. Have you seen out? No, not through yet. Did you see them go when I pulled off for the express? Oh, they went all right. Ben, has anything arrived yet? No, not yet. Will you go to Station Master Bonds and tell him? I'm afraid I've wrecked the Scotch Express. 